Hello, my name is Alexis Santos Lozada and I will be guiding you through the presentation titled Ongoing Patterns of Health Erosion Among Adults in the United States Not Captured by Self-Reported Health. This presentation summarizes the main findings included in a research article published in Social Science and Medicine Population Health, which details the materials and methods utilized in this study. Recent research has found a general pattern of health erosion when studying pain prevalence and allostatic load. Pain assessments are collected by self-report, but allostatic load is a composite score that is derived from blood, saliva, or urine samples. Allostatic load is conceptualized as a measure of cumulative wear and tear of the body due to stress and the toll that remains under our skin due to the effort the body makes to reattain balance after being exposed to them. It remains to be determined if self-reported health status also follows this pattern. Using data from the National Health Interview Survey, I examined whether a general pattern of health erosion is found in self-reported health among adults in the United States. What can we expect? One of the following two competing scenarios is possible. Either self-reported health chose a pattern consistent with the ongoing health erosion found in pain prevalence and allostatic load, or Self-reported health does not follow the pattern of population-level health erosion. If self-reported health is a valid and reliable measure of population health, it will follow the first scenario. The emergence of the second scenario would indicate that self-reported health does not move along with other population health metrics that are more closely aligned with what is happening in our bodies. The results will have direct relevance to the issue of validity of self-reported health as a measure that can be utilized to measure and track population health. This is what I found. In this figure, I present sex differences in health status, and as you can see, there is no discernible pattern of health erosion for the overall population or when the analysis is done for different age groups within the different years of data collection. When we analyze the way people from different cohorts report their health across different periods of data collection, we observe patterns consistent with those discussed before. The pattern of reporting is consistent across different data collection periods and when different cohorts are considered. Then I focus on patterns by educational attainment. Recent articles have said that this deterioration is mostly observed among working class adults. I do not find any discernible patterns of health erosion when considering educational attainment, regardless of the age groups being analyzed. When focusing on educational attainment differences by cohorts entering the NHIS at different points, I find consistent results, no discernible pattern of health erosion. And this analysis holds even when I consider more detailed educational attainment categories in our, my study. Finally, I focus on race ethnicity. Similar to the previous two analyses, I did not find any discernible patterns of health erosion regardless of the age group answering the questions during the period of analysis. Simply said, people from different racial ethnic backgrounds or racial ethnic groups with same age or same ages at different periods of time did not report worse health in more recent times, meaning that there's no pattern of health erosion now, if you can see in the last panel in this figure, there's a slight upward trend, particularly for Hispanic and non-Hispanic Black or African American uh, population. When um, cohort patterns are analyzed for the population at different points of data collection, the results hold. I don't see any increase in the rate at which different cohorts at different points in time are answering uh, the health status question. So to summarize my results, no discernible pattern of health erosion or health improvement is observed in self-reported health when patterns are analyzed by age, period, or cohort. I conclude this by examining the percent of the population reporting poor, fair, self-reported health in an analysis that looks at sex differences, educational attainment differences, or racial ethnic differences. This pattern holds even when a health transition question is analyzed. A health transition co question is collected by the NHIS by asking respondents to indicate whether their health was better, the same or worse than a year ago at the moment of the interview. To conclude, 
the analysis indicates that self-reported health does not follow the general pattern of health erosion found in self-assessed pain allostatic load, meaning that our mouths are not saying the same as our bodies. The analysis indicates that self-reported health does not follow this general pattern of health erosion and that the percent of the population reporting poor fair health status has remained relatively stable between 1997 and 2018. Further research is required to determine whether self-reported health is an appropriate metric to track population health in the United States, but this is one of the studies that joins the ranks of previous studies that are sort of bringing an alert to the issue that this may not be the case. I want to thank the Social Science Research Institute, the Population Research Institute at the Pennsylvania State University for their support. PRI is supported by a grant by the NICHD and the Pennsylvania State University and the SSRI. I am supported by a diversity supplement granted through the Interdisciplinary Network on Rural Population Health and Aging by the National Institute on Aging. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to your comments or questions. This is my email and this is my Twitter. Thank you.